Please excuse my voice. <laughs> I have a cold, which is why it's sounding particularly sexy today. Uh, <laughs> gotta love that deep cold voice. Hey Spuds, it's Jamie. How's it going? And welcome back to another video. Thank you for clicking on this video. I hope you are well. And today I'm going to be talking about a recent controversy that has come up and JK Rowling is kind of at the centre of it. So that's what this video is about roughly what's happened and what her response to it was and why the outcome has been what it's been. <laughs> it will make sense, I promise. I think. I hope it will. So I think a lot of people watching won't be surprised, or maybe you will be surprised, I'm not sure, that JK Rowling has shown indications of being on the side of kind of transphobic thinking, uh, more specifically kind of tough thinking. And tough is essentially a quick way of saying trans, exclusionary, radical, feminist, but trans exclusionary radical feminists are a type of radical feminist that believe trans women are men and that biological sex is like there's two and that's it and nothing can change and trans people aren't really real, but basically completely ignore trans men, essentially, from what I've seen, because trans men would destroy the arguments that they have. <laughs> this is not a video specifically on trans exclusionary radical feminism, but just as a like nutshell description so you kind of understand what I mean when I say JK Rowling is kind of leaning on that side of thinking, or appears to be leaning on that side of thinking. So this has been suspected for a while with Rowling in terms of some previous like tweets and people that she's followed and different things like that, but it's never been very direct. There's always been maybe an explanation or kind of speculation over what's happening. But in a recent tweet that she tweeted from her own her own hands, I presume, because it's her account, or people would be safe to assume that it was her thinking, kind of all but confirms this alignment in thinking, or at least a huge, huge error and irresponsibility in tweeting something without knowing any of the facts. We're gonna get into this in a bit. So this tweet, it, oh, my voice, <laughs> it's like being three months on tea all over again. <laughs> so this tweet from Rowling is basically a very open support of somebody who was transphobic. Maya Forstater is a gender critical woman who speaks openly about how she does not agree with trans people, basically. And what happened to her is that her work contract was not renewed due to her views and her public sharing of her views on trans people. She took this lack of renewal of contract to court, to a employment tribunal, and she lost her case. I've seen a few people support JK Rowling's tweet on social media, like liking it or retweeting it. Some people surprised me and I was a bit like, hmm, and other people definitely did not surprise me. I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of caught off guard in the first half. I was like, oh, is this a positive tweet about people? But then it just kind of progressively got worse and, and very clear to me as a trans person that it, it was not very positive, especially somebody who had read a bit about the case on my force data previously to reading that tweet. So I read it and I was like, hmm, this does not seem right. <laughs> so firstly, for context and just kind of a little bit about what is wrong with JK Rowling's tweet is that my force data was not fired, her contract was just not renewed, and it was not for stating that sex is real, it was for several clear and public instances of transphobia. The information about this case and what I'm describing in this video is stuff I've gathered from reading the court ruling. I wanted to do this video not based on like Twitter drama and like media headlines, I wanted to actually talk about what had been said, like exactly what she's done and what had been ruled and why she lost and why people are angry about this and angry at JK Rowling over this situation. So some of her views include that there are only two sexes and that these cannot be changed. I mean, for starters, that just completely ignores the existence of intersex people. Uh, next, the classic one that trans women are not women and trans men are not men. As she went so far as to really hammer home how much she believes that trans women are actually men and that she will continue to say this and to share this statement. She also refused to use the correct pronouns for a non-binary colleague in the workplace, which is discriminatory. She also believes that a gender recognition certificate is legal fiction. She doesn't believe it's real, like it's just it has no standing in her mind. But actually what a gender recognition certificate is, that is a legal document that legally allows transgender people to be recognised as the sex that is their gender. This is currently only for binary transgender people because that is what's covered under the Gender Recognition Act in the UK, but what it allows is for trans men like myself to be legally recognised as male in terms of my sex on my birth certificate and just everywhere I am recognised as a man and as male and for trans women this allows them to be legally recognised as female. Because of her views on gender recognition certificate Maya is refusing to accept that transgender people can be legally recognised as their sex. Maya is therefore ignoring the legal right for trans people to change their sex and actively expresses this negatively in her workplace and online or did in her workplace. Ultimately her views go against 
against the progressing scientific knowledge we have on sex and gender and are just plain discriminatory against transgender people. So after my full status contract was not renewed, she was not happy and so took this to an employment tribunal and subsequently lost the case with the tribunal ruling against her. Essentially, the judge ruled that Maya's views are and I quote, incompatible with human dignity and fundamental rights of others. The ruling also continued to say that Maya is not entitled to ignore the legally recognized sex of a transgender person and that her belief that a transgender woman, even one with a gender recognition certificate, cannot honestly describe herself as a woman is a view that is not worthy of respect within a democratic society. So basically, in short, the views that Maya Forstater holds and actively shares online were ruled as being incompatible with the basic human rights of others. I must say, it is nice to hear this kind of ruling and see the courts recognizing equality so strongly. So, the big question, kind of what this video is about, but that well, is half of what this video is about. What did JK Rowling do? What was her role in this whole situation? Basically, she's adding fuel to the fire of misinformation. And this is something that often spreads around events of transphobia and people facing consequences of transphobia and just trans people in general. The way trans people are portrayed in the media and on social media is just horrible most of the time and this is no different. So Rowling is spreading the word that Maya Forstater is a woman that was fired from her job for stating that sex is real. But she wasn't fired, her contract just wasn't renewed, and she didn't just state that sex is real, she was actively discriminating against transgender people in the workplace and online. What really happened in this case goes far, far beyond somebody being fired for saying that sex is real. And by saying that and spreading that as fact of what's happened is gross misinterpretation and just twisting of what happened. And it is information that is designed to make Maya look like a victim and like she did nothing wrong in this situation and that angry, angry trans activists are the bad guys and she happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. That, that, that is not what happened. She actively did something wrong and she has faced the consequences. Really, she denied scientific knowledge, the legal recognition of trans people. She was just plain disrespectful to a whole community within society and actively expressed these views in the workplace and online, which is the whole big wrong bit. We, we can't change people's opinions, but we can say, don't let those opinions affect how you treat other people. People still deserve to be treated with respect. And it's a great win for trans rights that she lost her tribunal case. It is just a shame that certain media outlets and certain celebrities and people on social media and like influencers, if you like, are downplaying what's happened. And not just downplaying what's happened, but completely misrepresenting what happened and spinning the facts to make Maya Forstater to look like she did nothing wrong. This is very dangerous because not everybody will take the time to look into the real facts. I think we're all guilty at one point or another scrolling through Twitter, seeing a tweet about somebody or something that is on one side of an argument or another and believing it without reading any more into it and going, yeah, I agree with that. So not everybody does look into the facts. And coming from somebody with JK Rowling's authority and size and just her platform, people are likely to trust what she's saying. Having a platform of any size comes with a form of responsibility. And if you're using that platform to manipulate and spread information, that is just really not a good thing. And if you're using that platform to tweet things out that could have a huge negative effect without looking into the facts and whether what you're tweeting about is right, then that's hugely irresponsible and also wrong in a different way. So if we give JK Rowling the benefit of the doubt, let's say, it was at least hugely irresponsible to tweet what she tweeted without knowing the facts. Because in my eyes, the only way that that is not siding with somebody who's transphobic and sharing views that align with trans exclusionary radical feminism is if you didn't know what happened and you genuinely believe that somebody got fired from their job just for saying once, oh, sex is real, boom, fired. But if she did have the facts, some of the facts, just a, just a handful, a nugget of factual information about this case, then it, it, is, it is transphobic and it's aligning with somebody who was openly transphobic and has faced the consequences of that. And you know, for JK Rowling to tweet what she tweeted, if she did have the facts and she really knew what happened in this case, that is siding with transphobic views and the views of trans exclusionary radical feminism because this is primarily about excluding and denying the existence of trans women. And so why is this a big deal? Why have people got so 
angry over this and so angry at JK Rowling over this. Firstly, it's because of the size and the power of her platform to be spreading something that is just so wrong to the fact of what actually happened. Secondly, I think it's because it comes as a shock to so many people in our generation and, and other generations and just people in general who look up to JK Rowling and enjoy the world of Harry Potter and found the world of Harry Potter an escape. Harry Potter is a created world that seems to celebrate being different and fighting for what's right and standing up to bullies and protecting people who are vulnerable and to see the creator of this thing that's so magical and an escape to so many people, including so many LGBTQ plus people, like there's a huge LGBTQ plus fan base of Harry Potter. It's really disappointing to see the creator of that world basically stand up and say, hey, I don't, I don't support trans people. When in reality, trans people are not dangerous. Trans people just want to be recognised as the gender that they are and respected as such. And the fact is that trans people are scientifically recognised now and in some places legally recognised too, including the UK. And this scientific and legal recognition of trans people is still fact and the existence of trans people is still fact even if transphobes want to deny it and make stuff up to make it sound like it's not real. Trans people aren't just going to disappear because you bury your head in the sand and shout transphobia from your ass. We're still here. In my opinion, this whole situation feels bittersweet. On one hand, it's a win for human rights and trans rights, which trans rights are human rights. It's a win for human rights and equality, whereby a transphobic individual who was sharing those transphobic views and being transphobic online and in the workplace was not allowed to get away with that behaviour. She faced the consequences of being anti-trans. And that's a great step forward. But at the same time, it's also really sad to see certain people, including the person who created the world of Harry Potter, coming out and very clearly supporting Maya Forstater's behaviour. For the record though, and just before I end this video, I do want to say that I don't feel bad for enjoying the world of Harry Potter still, and I really hope that fans out there don't. It might take a while before you get back into it, but I think you can definitely still appreciate the creation and the world that's been created without liking the creator. I understand how some people will feel conflicted about this, but remember, we have wonderful trans allies and vocal trans activists like Emma Watson. And who knows, we potentially might not have had that voice within society and have a celebrity with that power who stood up for trans rights if it hadn't been for JK Rowling's creation. So it's not all bad, there's positives out of this situation. I think that in a way, JK Rowling is so far removed from what she created now that you can watch Harry Potter and it's still a world you can escape to. But yeah, let me know your thoughts. I think it's great that we seem to be progressing in many ways towards a society that is not accepting transphobia anymore and workplaces that are not accepting this kind of behaviour. If you like this video, think about giving it a thumbs up and subscribing, but no pressure if you don't want to. As always, guys, thank you so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Much love. Bye. At least you don't have to listen to my voice anymore today. Hopefully the next video will not sound like this.